Hi everyone, welcome to MSA 2018. My name is Amrit and this tutorial is about Docker. So we're going to learn how to Dockerize a React application that you made previously. Um, so this involves learning the concepts of Docker and then creating the Docker file and of course building and running that Docker file. So let's start off by understanding some terminology. A container is simply a package of the application. So it has all the libraries and the dependencies the application needs in order for it to run on the host machine. An image is simply a template for creating the environment. Um, a Docker engine just isolates all the containers and the images on the host machine. And of course, a Docker file just defines the image. So it's a, it's a text file with all the steps um, it needs to perform in order to create the image. Um, so let's start by understanding the, what a virtual machine is. So a virtual machine is simply an emulation of a real computer. Um, this part is the virtual machine and it runs on the hypervisor on the physical computer or slash the physical server. Um, the virtual machine ha can have multiple applications running in it. However, the downside of a virtual machine is that if app A um, for let's say needs 100% of this uh, memory slash or 90% of the memory then app B and app C are at a disadvantage because they might need some memories too so this structure becomes a bit resource heavy on the physical host computer and because all the apps are fighting for the same RAM and the CPU um, it can slow down the computer so what Docker does then is it isolates these apps. So Docker would containerize app A, doc it would containerize app B, and then app C. And then what Docker Engine does is basically control how much resources each of the apps are taking from the host computer. So now let's take a look at um, the Docker Engine. So over here, we have the Docker Engine running on the host computer. So these uh, square boxes are called containers and the container is what has your application running inside of it. Each container has its own operating system along with all the libraries and the dependencies the application needs uh, in order for it to run. These operating systems then talk to the Docker engine and then Docker engine allocates the resources um, through the kernel um, from the host computer that each of the containers take. So a kernel is simply um, basic code that manages everything on the PC. So it has access to the CPU and the memory and the disk. Um, the structure means that the Docker engine is able to um, containerize slash isolate the applications that are running on the computer and hence makes it less resource heavy. So let's move on to the um, demo part. If you haven't installed Docker on your machine, you need to do that. And the way that you know that Docker is running on your machine, um, on Windows, you will have this blue whale down here. And in Mac, the whale will be up here. And if that whale is red, that means your Docker isn't running. So I'm assuming that all of you have Docker running. And then if we go ahead, and make a file so your react app should be in this format your my app should have all the files that you um, that your react app is using and outside the my app is the docker file and of course the uh, docker ignore file so this setup is just because of the way that I have set up my commands in the docker file so if you could make if you make the structure and then it should be working perfectly if you just copy paste the docker file so I'm going to navigate to my in my command line I am going to navigate to this folder so if you do a dir on windows or ls on the mac you will see the um, this place where you're at. So currently, I can see my app and of course my Docker file and Docker ignore file, which is this place. So I'm currently in the right directory right now. Um, in order to run Docker file, you need to be in the directory that has the Docker file. 
So um, I'm just going to show you now how to create the Docker file. So so my Docker file is already created. Um, these are my my app applications, and this is my Docker file outside of my app, just adjacent to it. And to explain the Docker file, we always build on images um, that I have have been previously built. So in in this situation, we're building on Node 8.11.3. So this from command get, uh, brings up the base image so that we can build on it. And then the environment variable env just means the environment variable, and they are global variables. And arg are basically argument parameters. They give the environment variables their actual value. Run is basically the run command. Working directory is stating the directory um, that you'll be working in. Copy command just copies the files in the my app to the working directory. Um, run simply runs the npm install. And of course, cmd is just a command line. So what that does is it installs the HTTP server, which is what we need in order to run our React application in the, in the Docker engine. Um, it builds it and then it opens up the port, port 3000 and this is just ending the loop. So if you create this Docker file adjacent to your my app and then you also have a Docker ignore file. So what this Docker ignore file does is basically you don't need it, but it is a good practice to have it just because it makes it a bit quicker um, when you when you are deploying your app. So um, once that's done, uh, going back to our command line, I'm in MSA 18 and this is where my Docker file and my app are, are living. So if I just run the docker build dash t my app command, this command builds your application. So this is what it should look like. And my one was quick just because I've built my image previously. Um, your one, if it's just sitting there, just wait for it. It will eventually do something unless there are errors coming. So it usually takes a while. So once that's done, I can go ahead and see the images. So it's the Docker images and it lists all the images I've made. And this is the latest one that I made, which was two days ago. So the, f the reason this says two days ago is because I haven't changed my code for the past two days. So every time you change your code, it creates a new image. So if I was to um, run this, I'm just going to go back to the GitHub page and copy this command and paste it. And I'm going to get my uh, I'm going to get my image ID. So this is the image ID that will be running. If I just put that in and path to docker file we need to put that in as well and if i just navigate to my file explorer copy this path and just put that in and hit enter that should run my docker app um, and we'll just have to wait it might take a while for you So once we see this screen, um, it says it's running on local 3000. So if I just navigate to that, um, you can see our app dank, not dank running on that. So what we just did was, so in order, uh, if we want to make changes and uh, run it again or build it again, you have to go control C to end this loop, um, just so um, you can build it again. So what we just did was create the docker file, um, create the docker ignore file and just build and run the application. Um, going back to the PowerPoint, if I just go back and explain this, what just happened. So a normal process goes in this fashion. You have the code and you execute the code on to the, um, on the new, com on the, your host computer, sorry. And that uses the resources. So this is the virtual machine method. Um, what we just did was this, we had a Docker file 
and that Docker file just packaged up the code, the operating system, and any other dependencies that um, the application needed in order for it to run. When we run the docker build command, it sends the docker file to the docker engine and that creates a docker image. Now, every time you run the docker build command, it will create a new docker image. And once you run the docker run command, you will get a container. The square uh, just shows a container and you can have multiple containers running inside the Docker engine. So this is of course the Docker engine and the Docker engine is running onto the host computer. And as I pre mentioned previously, the Docker engine talks to the kernel um, and then that um, allocates resources for each of the containers. Now, um, the benefit that Docker gives us is that you are able to take the Docker image to add to that, if we see here, we, we cannot do that with a normal application because it does not have the dependencies it needs in order for it to run all the libraries um, packaged up with it. So it might actually not run on the host computer. So Docker gives us the peace of mind that whatever we build locally, we are able to uh, deploy it to the cloud and ensure that it will work on someone else's computer. So uh, this image I found on Google, um, you can go and find this tutorial on Medium. It's by Mark Hobson and he clearly explained this um, image in his, in his blog. So just to finish off, if you are on um, Mac, you can download the Docker Community Edition for Mac. And if you are on Windows, you can download Docker Community Edition for Windows. Um, the Windows one only works if you are on Windows Pro or Enterprise. So we suggest that you download um, Docker Toolbox and all the Docker commands um, should run in Docker Toolbox um, instead of the terminal. So I hope you were able to follow along and make your Docker file and of course um, build and run your Docker file. Um, if you are getting errors, feel free to post and then uh, there's also our Facebook page. So feel free to post there and we will um, try and um, troubleshoot your errors as fast as possible. Thank you.